sports car. Is there any other word in the English language quite as provocative? Most scholars would agree the answer is no. I'm standing next to the Porsche 918, arguably one of Porsche's sportiest cars in their current lineup. But instead of feeling extremely excited, I'm already a little bit concerned. You see, Porsche, like other German automakers, have their roots in aviation. Before transitioning into making sporty, driver-involved cars. But these days, making a pure driver's car isn't enough. Brands have to make a statement, have an agenda, and take a stand. And if there's any budget left over, maybe make a car that's exciting to drive. Has Porsche given us enthusiasts a car worth lusting over? Or did they let the bean counters in marketing have the final word? Let's find out. If you want a one sentence summary of the 918, here it is. Porsche has created an eco-friendly platform, packaged it in a sporty costume, and delivered it with the implied promise that under certain driving conditions, you may never need to visit the gas pump again. Now, similar to the BMW i3 and the Chevy Volt, Porsche's approach to weaning us off fossil fuels is a big, powerful electric motor coupled with a gasoline-powered range extender. And that helps to combat any anxieties you might have about not having enough juice. And believe me, you're gonna have range anxiety. Because get this, on electric power only, the total range of the 918 is 18 miles. Now, I thought the Germans weren't known for their sense of humor, but that is one hell of a joke. Now, the hybrid system works well enough, but honestly, the gas range extender is anything but subtle. See what I mean? It's loud and buzzy, and when it kicks on, you know it. Now, I think that it's a good thing this is a limited production car, because in my opinion, this technology just isn't ready for the mainstream. Honestly though, this car's problems go deeper than its powertrain. This is a car with an identity crisis. Its sporty characteristics are tainted by its eco-friendly persona. And at the same time, it's not a dedicated enough of an effort to be a real alternative to a gas-powered car. Frankly, the driving experience sometimes it feels so disconnected that you may be better off saving your money, buying a Prius, and driving it around with an Oculus Rift. That's not to say this is a bad car, not at all. It has its merits, and the technology is very impressive. From its self-driving capabilities to its comprehensive, if clunky, infotainment system. But for me, a hardworking, simple guy, I like my sports cars pure, sporty, and honest. Porsche calls this car progress, but progress toward what exactly? You know, more and more I'm convinced if you want a pure, involving driving experience, you may be better off looking to the past instead of the future. The year was 2002. Companies like Google and Amazon ruled the markets as conflict in the Middle East ruled the headlines. Superhero films cleaned up at the box office while Pepsi and Coke battled for soft drink supremacy. It was a much different time. Meanwhile, at a Scuderia deep in the village of Marinello, Enzo Ferrari was putting the finishing touches on his passion project, a car that he hoped would push the definition of sporty to a whole new level and give an air of legitimacy to his scrappy car company. This was a car that was so ambitious so beautiful and so perfect that when he stepped back from his drawing board to admire his creation, there was only one name that came to mind. He called it Enzo. What is beauty? What is 
elegance, can a machine feel emotion? These are the questions that Ferrari sought to answer when they designed and built the Enzo. Did they succeed? Well, there's only one way to find out. Okay, straight away, we've got a big, proper V12 in the rear, back wheel drive with Posi, and a lightweight carbon fiber monocoque this thing's the stuff of enthusiast dreams. You just have to take one look at the F1 style gauge cluster to know you're in something special. Oh, and then the brakes pull you down. Oh, like traffic on the M1 outside Chesterhamshire on the night of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. And then you roll back into the throttle and, oh god, gear change after gear change, it's savage. I wish you were here to feel this. Okay, look, Poindexter, here's the thing. If you're the type of car enthusiast who judges a supercar using a calculator, then sure, the 918 is gonna have some advantages over the Enzo, like fuel efficiency, top speed, handling, build quality, safety. But here's the thing that your TI-83 Plus Silver Edition can't calculate for you, soul. That certain X factor, what our Italian viewers might be familiar with as calling a quattro formaggio. Put this car next to the 918 and its proportions come alive. It feels like a car humans designed and not robots. Unlike the sterile experience of the 918, the Enzo's charm is in its imperfections. And this is a car with a lot of charm. There's no way around it. The Enzo is an irrational car. And let me warn you, it'll make you do irrational things to own it, like selling your house and most of your possessions. But if you want the best car ever made, well, you've got no other choice. The Enzo is it. But if you want an Enzo, you can't have this one, because this one is mine. Until next time.